Hear now our gospel reading this morning. Gospel from John. Christ says to the disciples, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for life is the life for the world. The life of the world is my flesh. The Jewish authorities then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and which they died, but the one who eats this bread, this bread will live forever. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. May your word be flesh to us, Lord. May it take form and live within us. May the meditations of our hearts, the words of our mouth, the stillness, and the dance reflect your praise. In Christ's name, amen. Though Celtic spirituality arose centuries after these words were written, there are some ways in which this puzzling passage is particularly apt to speak about our Celtic heritage. In part, that is because the Celts and their spiritual traditions tended to be, well, visceral. They tended to be very deeply connected to everyday things and to survive in an everyday life you had to hunt, know the nature trails, brave the bad weather. You had to immerse yourself. You had to be surrounded by that which was your environment, and the environment was not easy. Celtic spirituality did not arise on the Bahamas. It was not a matter of going out and picking a few breadfruit or mangoes from the tree. Celtic spirituality arose in the worst lands, mostly because they were driven out to the worst lands and stayed there and made life there and found God there in the worst places. This, too, is part of our, our inheritance. The reminder that God is not somehow distant from us when we are distant from comfort. The Celts were famous for speaking psalms like the one that, that our worship leader read for us, but doing so immersed in 40-degree water up to their necks, rehearsing and sending forth praise as they stood in the ocean waves. They waded through icy creeks, remembering the suffering of Christ and seeking God's deliverance. In this passage, Jesus gives a similarly visceral image to the disciples and to those who listen, and says, not only do you have to eat my flesh, but the word in Greek is gnaw. You have to gnaw on my bones. You have to slurp my living essence. Then, and only then, do you have eternal life. Not surprisingly, this word took a little while to take root in the disciples, and many turned away, as we'll hear later. It was too hard. It was too much. It was too much an immersion. But for the Celts, there was a certain attraction to that which was so completely consuming. The Celts, in their spirituality, were all in. They were all in or all out. So it was that many of the pagan tribes converted all at once when they first heard the preachings of saints like Cuthbert and Aidan. 
Columba from Iona. All of these who proselytize. St. Patrick who comes to Ireland and preaches manages to capture the heart of the king of Ireland because when he was baptized, Patrick took his staff and planted it in the mud of the river, intending to lower the king in to baptize him. But unbeknownst to him, he planted the staff. As he jammed it into the mud, he jammed it onto the foot of the king, who said nothing until, limping and bleeding, he walks from the water to the shore. And Patrick says, my lord, what happened to you? And he says, you stabbed me with a staff when I was in the water. He says, well, why did you not cry out? And the Irish king said, I thought it was part of the ceremony. He was prepared to wait for the blessing even through the pain. And so we too inherit some of that today. All this week, all this month, all this time, we have been thinking about Jesus who has spoken about being the bread of life. Find this bread, he says. Work for something that matters. Why would you work for bread that perishes as gold? Don't, author. But here's the thing. The bread of eternal life is not composed of flour only. It is not by earthly bread alone that you can live. It is rather, rather, by digging in to the real meat of this world. You have to go to the places where there is real pain. You have to be in the places where there is real trouble. You must drink deeply of your trials and tribulations and find in them transformation. All this week, I invite you to meditate on how that might be working through the metaphor of yeast today. We began with gathering ingredients three weeks ago. We talked about kneading of bread. We kneaded dough last week and talked about the struggle. Today, we talk about the waiting. While well, all that we've worked into our lives rises. There is a quietness about our spirits amidst the troubles and trials. There is a stillness that can guide us when we are in the worst of calamities and the harshest of environments. And whether that is an environment of dangerous weather or whether it is the weather of the heart that is beating against the shores of your mind and maybe robbing you of your sleep, it is a stillness that comes from beyond us that guides us. In a few moments, I want to offer you the chance to pray. Not to watch somebody pray, but to actually pray yourself. Uh, this, is our, this is our mission. This is our hope. Right? This is why we're doing all of these weird things. Ministers not behind the pulpit where he's safe and secure and where you're safer and would like him to be. <laughs> Because if prayer is about watching somebody else do it for you, it is a wonderful gift, but it cannot live inside you. It cannot be the yeast in your loaf. Yeast works like this. Yeast combines with the sugars it feeds. It's a little colony, and the colony reproduces, and it grows, and as it does, it off-gasses, and the gas lifts through the structure that you have created by kneading the bread and developing the gluten. It lifts, and because it cannot escape, it inflates the bread. Like this. It is literally overflowing. This is the life. This is the life that is growing inside this loaf and trapping the air and gases, and it rises. In stillness, though, it has to work. It takes, you can't be shaking it too hard. You can't be jiggling it too much. It has to be warm. The conditions have to be right. 
stillness for humanity is one of those conditions to let that which is planted in you, working divinely in you, to rise divinely in your soul. <clears throat> Professor Maxwell said it ably, these are dangerous times. It is dangerous because we are losing sight of the fact that we are bound to one another. It is dangerous because it's become popular and even easy to say that my neighbor is not my neighbor. That's somebody else's neighbor. Let somebody else take care of them. And I wonder what Jesus would say to that if he found that in our loaves. Warmth and moisture nutrients will breed a lot of things. Not just yeast. The reason bread doesn't immediately become a festering pit of staphylococcus is because the yeast is stronger and more. It outcompetes that which would kill us. The yeast lives and thrives. And when the yeast thrives, the other pathogens cannot. Let those who have ears hear, right? There is work to do that is waiting for us to rise to to multiply and to give out that which lifts this world, not tears it down. So today, now, in this moment, in stillness of your pew, or if you wish to rise and walk, however you best pray, pray this day with us, in stillness to let that which is of the divine be taken into you. Chew on what Jesus has offered us, Drink deeply of the water of life that suggests that suffering is not the end of our well-being, but neither is it ours to dole out to others. We can persevere. We can rise. <laughs>